talking about undersupply versus oversupply, but now the thinking is we may want to consider overbuilding a bit beyond what we have planned for. Right? And of course, after many years, MediShield has now um, been, been tweaked and extended to cover congenital and neonatal conditions. So the big challenge for all of us who are watching, who are keen policy watchers, are to ask, there's been a slew of changes in the last 24 months. What are all these changes due to? Is it due to a genuine change in the ideology of the government? Is it political posturing because of the difficult electorate today? It's really very difficult to say. I'm, I'm personally optimistic. I think Singapore has changed very profoundly and that these, these are the harbingers of good things. Yes, we may have to spend more. We may have to worry about how to pay for certain social services, healthcare, housing, um, and so on and so forth. And the difficulty, as what Mr. Lee said many years ago, was how to strike the balance. But really, I will leave you with the words of Gandhi, where he said that the future depends on what you do today. So the future for healthcare for Singapore depends on what we all do today. And I look to all of you to collectively work with all of us to come up with solutions that will help us to have a better Singapore. Thank you. I, I thank Jeremy for a very good presentation. And I must say, we all look forward to his book on Singapore health policy. Um, I would, would like to make one commercial pitch on his behalf. For those of you who are Fulbright scholars, um, you may be, int be interested to know that he's the president of the Fulbright Association. And the annual dinner will happen on the 25th of April. <laughs> um, uh, our next speaker uh, is, is another good friend, Dr. Lam Pin Min. Dr. Lam is a consultant ophthalmologist at the KK Women and Children's Hospital and he's also the chairman of the Government Parliamentary Committee on Health. Pin Min, please. Uh, Professor Tommy Koh, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to all of you. Uh, it is indeed a great honour to be invited to this uh, Tembusu Forum on Healthcare. But let me first uh, bring everyone back to the fundamentals of uh, our healthcare system because we need to know the confines of our box so that we are able to think out of the box to improve on the system subsequently. And healthcare is always a very emotive uh, issue for many Singaporeans as it affects us in one way or another. Everyone seeks healthcare services at one point in our lives, whether we are newborns, children, adults or senior citizens. And it is also one of the essential services expected from the government as citizens in this country. So the title of my presentation is The Good, The Bad and The Ugly of the Singapore healthcare system. And we all agree that there is no perfect healthcare system in the world. Anyone who tells us that they can offer a solution to solve all the woes of our healthcare system in the world is probably too good to be true. As in all things, there will always be compromises and trade-offs. And within this short 15 minutes, I hope to share with you my personal view and not the view of the government, <laughs> all right, the strengths, the weaknesses, and the challenges of the Singapore healthcare system. There are many different models of healthcare system, ranging from those completely operated by the government to others based entirely on private enterprises. Some offers free national medical coverage, some rely on insurance, and others require patients to pay bills out of pocket at the time of service. There is no one-size-fits-all solution, and Singapore has come a long way from a very basic healthcare system half a century ago to one of sophistication and envy of many nations. Singapore's healthcare system has developed and evolved through the years to what it is today through a mix of pragmatism and eclecticism, learning and adapting from best practices to arrive at a formula that works for all of us. 
It is a system built on firm foundations, resting on the tenets of the dirty word, individual responsibility, <laughs> harnessing markets, and ensuring access to healthcare for those who require it. The first key principle of which Singapore's healthcare system is built is emphasis on inv individual responsibilities for one's own health. Health promotion and disease prevention are the foundations of our healthcare system. And this principle is further reinforced to the healthcare financing system, which uh, Professor Poor has uh, elaborated earlier on. And recognizing the value of working with markets, the second principle is to leverage on market mechanisms where possible to encourage competition and improve efficiency. For example, the Singapore medical insurance system is designed to leverage on the market with certain safeguards. In addition, to promote information transparency and empower consumers to make more informed decisions, the Ministry of Health publishes prices charged by public providers of primary care and selected public and private inpatient services. The third principle guiding the design of our healthcare system is to ensure that no one is denied access to good basic healthcare when it is needed. To do this, subsidies are directed to those who are most in need of financial assistance. Our healthcare system comprises of public and private healthcare. Prior to 1985, the MOH directly manages or manage all public hospitals and polyclinics. However, from 1984 and 85 onwards, the public hospitals and institutes were gradually corporatized so as to uh, allow greater operational flexibility and faster responses to patients' needs. And in 2000, a further step of clustering took place to promote economies of scale and integration of care between medical institutions. However, after about a decade of clustered healthcare delivery, this modality had a shortfall. Uh, it was not optimal for promoting vertical integration of care, particularly with non-public sector partners. So MOH has thus restructured the healthcare system to address some of the challenges faced by Singapore. The new healthcare delivery system comprises regionally distributed pyramidal system anchored by restructured hospitals, working in close partnership with neighbouring healthcare providers in the primary, intermediate, as well as the long-term care, such as private GPs and polyclinics, community hospitals, and VWO-run nursing homes, respectively. This regional clustering of health services allow a more integrated and seamless provision of healthcare services. Having worked in the healthcare industry for the past 20 years, it offers me first-hand experience on the good, the bad, and the ugly sides of our healthcare system. As GPC Chair for Health, I also had the privilege of engaging many Singaporeans, constituents, and MOH policymakers on some of the healthcare issues faced on the ground as a healthcare professional, as well as an ordinary citizen seeking healthcare services. So is the current system good, bad, or is it rotten to the core, requiring a major facelift, as some advocates make it to be? I personally do not think so. So what are the strengths of the Singapore healthcare system? Our healthcare system is generally cost-effective, with a national healthcare expenditure at 4% of GDP. In comparison, OECD's average is about 9.6%. Even then, Singapore achieves pretty good health outcomes. The WHO statistics revealed that US spends about 16 to 18% of its GDP on healthcare, while Singapore spends only about 4%. Looking at the indices in the slide, Singaporeans are considerably healthier than Americans. Here are some comparisons. The life expectancy at birth in the US is about 78 years. In Singapore, it's 82 years. The US infant mortality rate is 6.4 deaths per 100 live births, whereas in Singapore, just 2.3 deaths per 1,000. Despite spending less than many other developed countries when measured as a percentage of GDP, Singapore is internationally regarded as having achieved comparable, if not better, healthcare outcomes, such as life expectancies, as shown in this slide. 